Hey guys, how you doing? So why do I use plain old PHP, uh, plain old, uh, you know, bootstrap or maybe CSS grid, uh, HTML5? Why am I using these technologies a lot? And as opposed to jumping into the hot new stuff like the TypeScripts and the uh, React and the Vue, although we do use a little bit of Vue. Why do I say you shouldn't break out the web framework, even though we use Laravel on my own app, Studio Web, SaaS app that's uh, used by schools all over the world? It's because you got to not lose track of the reason for all these technologies, whether it be a framework, a language, or a library. It's for speed, baby. It's for speed. For speed and ease of development. One of the big noob mistakes that new engineers make, uh, noob engineers, is that they overcomplicate their lives. They start adding technology into the mix of a project because it's cool, it's hot, because we may need to do X, Y, and Z at some point in time, some point in, time in a f distant future for a project, which will never happen, by the way. So don't over-engineer, man. You choose the technologies that you need to, to implement whatever project you're implementing and nothing more. Do not leverage a framework, for example, because you may need to add a certain functionality in the future. That often doesn't happen. I've made that mistake. Last time I made, the, made that mistake was actually about... I don't know, about four years ago or so. Uh, last thing, very simple thing. We were putting up a new branding site. And so my developer at the time, we were very comfortable with Laravel, great framework. We like it, PHP Laravel. And he said, yeah, let's just use Laravel. And I'm like, well, we just, it's just a static site, man. We don't need to do much. He goes, ah, you know, blah, blah, you know, it's easy. Okay, whatever. I had 10,000 things I got to take care of. So I told my lead, who's a really good developer, by the way, fantastic. Nonetheless, we put it up. So then I get my designer on the job uh, to put up the views, uh, the templates, if you will, the front end of it. And he was moaning and groaning rightfully. He said, why did we use Laravel? He knew Laravel. He says, you know, you're adding extra work for essentially what's going to be a static site. It should be HTML and CSS, maybe Bootstrap. Anyway, whatever, he implemented it, we implemented it. He's right, you know, four or five years later, whatever it is, I lose track of time because I'm old, I'm losing my hair. So it could be six years ago for all, I know, for all I know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, we implemented the site with Laravel because someday we may need it to do something a bit more, which never happened, of course. Always oh, never happens. And um, yeah, we created a complexity for nothing. So when I do have to do little updates every now and then, I have to go into the uh, I have to go into the file structure of Laravel. I have to go find the blade. Blah 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 blah. It's a big pain in the ass relative to just going to the HTML page or the PHP page if you want to use some includes or something. It's so much easier. So don't create work for yourself. Don't leverage technologies unless they ha unless you ha absolutely 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 need to use it. Let me close with this one ridiculous example, something that happened in the 90s. So back in the 1990s, at some point, I guess 97, 98, something like that, Flash was huge, Flash, uh, F-L-A-S-H, Flash. And it was for animations. This is long before HTML5 became standard, although the, the spec was out at that point, if I recall. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So Flash was huge. It allows you to add uh, some really cool multimedia to a website. And so everybody started implementing Flash because it looked good. So I remember I had a whole... This is when Studio Web, that's my learning SaaS now, but at the time it was a web design studio, Studio Web. So I had my small team of web designers and we had a whole bunch of clients. And uh, so we started doing what was the rage at the time, the Flash intro, the infamous Flash intro. So what was a Flash intro? It was kind of modeled after a, uh, you know, you, TV show comes on, you have the intro for the TV show, and then the show starts. Well, everybody decided for some reason that we, every website needed an intro page. Uh, which was like an animation that would appear. So because the technology was there and because everybody said, you know, you, you have a coffee shop, flash intro page, a little animation, coffee flying around and stuff like that. 
You had, uh, I don't know, uh, you fixed mufflers. You would have a flash intro page. You were a lawyer. You would have a flash intro page. It's more stylish flash intro page, but you had this flash intro page. So we were happy to build them because we're making money building. It was kind of fun to do little flash intro pages. Here's the thing. Nobody really needed them. So what happened after the f f everybody started building all these flash intro pages because this technology was there and everybody told us we had to use it. We had to have flash intro pages. I remember one of my clients said, yeah, here's a flash intro page. Here's a budget for that and so on and so forth. And he goes to me, why, why do we need this? Well, everybody needs a flash intro page. He said, oh, okay, you're the expert. Anyway, long story short, a few years, I don't know, could have been two years later, I forget now. It was discovered through web an analytics that the second most clicked button on the internet was the skip intro button. The second most clicked button on the, on the interwebs was the skip intro button. So you have your flash animation, but you'd, always, you'd give them a little escape, skip intro. Like you see that in Netflix now, skip intro. So you don't have to listen to that intro. It was the second most clicked button on the internet. The most clicked button on the internet was the back button in the web browser. And the second most clicked was the skip intro button. So nobody wanted to watch these damn things. They're such a waste of time. Anyway, so that's it. So that the, eventually the flash intro got killed because everybody realized that it was just a waste of time. Nobody watched them. Nobody wanted to watch them. So unless you had a very particular, maybe at a, a band site or some very artsy site, maybe you can do some flash intros and animations, but generally speaking, nobody needed them. Now, I'm not saying web frameworks are there. I'm not saying React is there. I'm not saying Vue is there. I'm not saying Laravel or whatever. The point of the story is that, to emphasize that do not use a technology just because it's there, just because some random nerd tells you that you got to use this. Really think about whether or not you want to implement a technology because whenever you implement a new technology into your, your development process, you're adding an extra layer of complexity, which costs time, and every new layer of complexity introduces new potential bugs. So for example, I did a story a little while ago uh, I got on a call with the lead development team for a publicly traded company and they have uh, hardware and a key part of the hardware is their app. They have an app for Android and iOS and um, it's got all kinds of problems, full bugs. So they got on, they wanted to get feedback from myself and a couple other guys about the product. So I got into a conversation in this meeting with the uh, lead and everything I had suspected from the outside looking in with nerd eyes, I've been doing this since 94, uh, I was right. So they use a middle layer uh, uh, to do their mobile app development. So they don't, they don't want to have two code bases. So instead of having an iOS code base and an Android code base, they use this middle layer, something called Xamarin, if I recall, from Microsoft. And they have all kinds of problems. And... I not having I've never used Xamarin and I think Microsoft has discontinued support for it. And I said, yeah, so you you have to deal with all those Xamarin issues, probably. And he goes, yeah, yeah, they got they got issues. So there you go. By introducing this layer of technology, the Xamarin, and I'm not picking on Xamarin by the way, it's just it's, it's, it's general rule. By introducing this new this layer of tech in their stack, they introduce another variable, another potential for problems. So don't introduce technology unless there's a real reason to do it. Now, in the case of this company, it made sense. Most companies who are developing mobile apps, they're not developing native because you don't want to maintain two code bases. So it makes sense to use a middle layer like a Flutter or a Xamarin or just a PWA. That makes sense. But Again, going back to the lesson of the video, do not leverage technologies, do not add complexity to your development process unless it's absolutely needed. Same thing with DevOps. DevOps, I was complaining about this years ago, got stupid, got stupid complex. Now they're simplifying it again. A hosting got stupid complex. Like it made no sense to me that developers have to provision their own servers. That's just silly. Yes, you're not a you're not a um, uh, sysadmin. You're not a, you're not a system administrator. You're a developer. 
you shouldn't have to be going in there and configuring your damn server. I, for my commercial app that's used in the marketplace, has been for years, we use a VPS, right? A fully managed VPS. I don't want to configure Jack. I want, if I need something done, I have a sysadmin, they do it. Not me, not my devs. Forget about it. The sysadmins do it. Sysadmins know their servers really, really well. It, again, it made no sense for me for the developer have to deal with all that, that nonsense. Not that it's nonsense, but you know what I mean. Anyway, keep it simple, stupid. One of the oldest principles in engineering, not just software engineering. Uh, let's not inject flash intros into our workflows unless we really need the flash intro. Thank you.